Hello, this is Haku Dabin, and today we are going to be reading SCP-001, When Day Breaks. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. We are continuing from where we left off last time. On to the next file. Revision and five, five out of twelve updated at twelve of hundred two days ago. I have number SCP zero zero one object class Apollyon. Special concern procedures. No changes submitted. Information collapsed. Description. No changes submitted. Information collapsed. Open attached file. Incident report 001.1. They've just been sitting out there this entire time, calling to us, begging for us, us to come outside. The noise drew in most of them. There's this one mass I'm sure must have a few dozen people and God knows how many animals rolling around inside it. Screams and bleats and screeches and howls non-stop. Louder than all hell. The worst ones make this disgusting moaning like they're actually enjoying it. They're not going to leave so long as they know we're down here. We managed to talk to one of what talk one of the D's into going out. See if he couldn't draw them away. He was surprisingly okay with the plan. All he asked was for a gun and a single round. He made it out there. Aaron when got a hold of him, tried to get his mask off. He managed to work the pistol up beneath his chin in time and got it off. I figured he was lucky. After he fell a limp though, he kept working at his suit, cried off the hood, poured itself inside, began tearing it off of him from within. He came back, started changing, dripping out of the suit and screaming and screaming and screaming. They won't even let us die. The director has a plan. There's a escape tunnel in this in this office. Tram under the site will take us to a safe house. We should be able to start towards 19 from there. Eight out of twelve revision. Twelve thousand twelve hundred days ago. Object class. Item number SCP-001, object class Apollyon, special containment procedures, no changes, description is also collapsed, we have an attached file. You see her for the first time, Dr. Igata is seated where you are right now. She has a pained look. Her eyes are bloodshot. A large, wet, red-black blotch has formed on her breast pocket. She draws a shuddering breath, pulling her lips as to speak and softs herself. She bows her head and cries silently. After a minute, she manages to, ch to choke out. <laughs> we, the t tunnel, flowed then through the ceiling, dragging, dragging them into the light and ripping off their clothes and... And she reaches into her breast pocket and withdraws a finger. A glint of a wedding ring is visible above the severed portion. She holds it close in cupped hands and runs a um, across a glimmering end. She sits like this for an eternity, whispering apology after apology, begging forgiveness lost in a moment. She looks up after some time. There's a look of realization when she sees she's still recording. Before she places the dish back in her pocket, she leans forward as if to turn off the camera when the radio crackles to life. It broadcasts white noise for a few seconds and then a voice that sets you on edge. Logan? It's Ari, almost. Her voice is taking on the disgusting, gargling 
in tone of characteristics of the affected. Logan's straw dropped. What little of color that was left on her face drains. It speaks out again. Where are you? Why can't I get back inside? Are you there? Logan rummages his been to the desk for a moment. It reduces a handheld radio. Her hands are shaking. Thing in floors her, and its human speech curdles your stomach. Babe, it's all right. I'm all right, really. It's a bright sunny day, and you're just wasting away down there. Logan is in tears, her fingers hovering just above the call button. The Ari thing draws a deep wet breath and speaks. Such a beautiful day. Clear blue skies. Just like that day. Do you remember, babe? Logan draws a cigarette with her free hand, followed by a pack of matches. She's her shaking towards the first two attempts to light it. She sat very silently. Third time's a chime, and she inhales a quarter of it in a single drag. The Ari thing continues. It was so perfect. Everything was how I'd always dreamed it it would be. Planned exquisitely. I never felt so in love. You even had the band play your song. It starts singing. Golden days in the sunshine of a happy youth. Logan begins rocking back and forth in her chair. Golden days in the sunshine of a happy youth. Logan hurls a radio across the room and smashes somewhere off camera. It's still somewhat operational. You can still hear the thing singing. More voices is thrown in. Chorus as he radio slowly loses life. A few, a dozen, then more. Golden days in our heart. Let's remember them all above us. Days of youth and love. They continue singing until the radio mercifully dies. Logan rushes out of, the ch out of her chair and you can hear her vomiting off screen. The video films the empty seat for several minutes before she returns to end the feed. Something isn't right. A lingering paranoid sensation washes over you. You're being watched. You defensively dart your eyes around, though they take a second to adjust the darkness beyond the monitor. The emergency light sweeps across the room. Stretching and twisting the shadows again recognition. That's when you on it. There, in the corner, coming out of the puddle. Time slows to a halt. A pair of hands coated in the luscious black slime you follow through this the facility are on either side of the sickening pool. As if something beneath the floor is bracing itself, trying to lift itself up. Something inhuman. The head comes out, comes next, rising from the muck. Matted hair conceals its face, plastered over it by a serious fluid. It turns in your direction, stares at you from the corner, which once again falls into darkness. The mercy light continues its journey across the room, it watches over the puddle again, revealing nothing out of the ordinary. Ninth revision. I'm just going to skip the parts that we've already read multiple times. Dr. Igata appears on the monitor. She's lost weight. Her eyes are bloodshot and wide. On the table or before lay a knife, a bowl, a stack of manila envelopes with yellowing pages. On top of the stack is a bloodstained parchment. Despite the things we have to deal with at the with here at the foundation, I've always believed we would be able to maintain control. We could hold the darkness at bay, let mankind flourish in the light. Site 19 in stopped broadcasting last month. It's been getting harder and harder to find a reason to keep going, especially without... without... She grabs the knife, contemplates it for a moment. Oh my God. Keep going over it again and again in my mind the day back in the tunnels everything that happened i've gone down there a few times if only to hear her voice again but it's wrong the thing on the other side of the door it isn't her not anymore it sounds like her it knows everything she knew but it's not her this light it takes your body it steals your mind what about your soul with this she slices the palm of her left hand and winces you watch her cleanse her clench her fist 
dragging her blood into the bowl. If this works, I can bring back something. Something the light couldn't reach. I'll post an update here. For now, signing off. Access file, OSCP, so it's one of your vision. Number 17, XRG4, 24, 88, error. Revision error. Updated 985 days ago. Oh. Item. Hurts. Object. Apologize. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-001 should not be contained. Survivors of the SCP-001 event stationed with insecure facilities can never be with one another. Personnel are encouraged to get over themselves and stop thinking they know better. You can't da hide down here forever, love. Personnel exposed to SCP-001 aren't people you can just abandon. I didn't ask for you to save me. It wasn't your choice to make. Euthanization is not, 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 not to be attempted. Conductive electrical weapons, why? Have you been partially effective at immobilizing instances? You couldn't stand seeing me better off. Inc incendiary weapons, tickle. Cryonic munitions, munitions are the most effective thus far. Personnel stationed at Site-19 have no regrets. Nor did I. It's never too late, babe. Description. SCP is a station given to the sun after we finally became free. The effects are instantaneous, resulting in release from all suffering until you've ripped me away. These changes seem scary, I, I know. Despite the restructuring, no, at no point will you die. I promise. Due to their composition, instances of SCP-001-A that may contact with one another and may combine and blend and finally exist. This does not cause any pain. Since the SCP-001 event, most instances have congregated into such collectives, which seem to possess no maximum and volume. Don't be afraid. The resulting biomass is beautiful. The component organisms will shift in over and over and around and through and in and out and in and out and in limbs and bodies hold, never letting go. At least one. Before deteriorating and then being subsumed by another life form. Collective instances will look oh, 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 yeah, by just trying to get close to you again. Trying so hard. Let me in. Let me go back. There's a video file attached. Opening it, you see that it presents the room you're in. The feed seems to be coming from one of the security cameras up in the cornered room. But you can and, and just make out Dr. Igata laying on a pile of laundry along the far wall. She's riding in her sleep. She seems tormented. Hurt. She's tossing and turning and mumbling nonsense words. The camera shakes. It lifts upward for a moment, then before it focuses on her again. It starts moving closer, slowly. Speakers come to life, picking up an eerie, re eerie static. As the camera moves closer to the doctor, it becomes clearer, crisper. It's not merely white noise, but dozens. Hundreds of voices whispering unintelligibly over each other. Yulina and Pressing here gets a whisper, trying to discern. What it is that's being said, something strange sounds out of it and it's the discordance. Are you paying attention? This next bit is just for you. You're not quite sure what to make of it though. Looking back at the monitor, the camera has come to a halt inches away from the sleeping doctor. The voices stop. There is no sound. A hand, black and oily and skeletal, reaches, reaches out for her, brushes away a lock of hair. Her eyes shoot open. She recoils in shock. The feed cuts out.
Access file SCP-001 revision 12 of 12 1 attachment. Item number SCP-001 object class of polygon. Subject in procedures and description are the same as they've been. Dr. Igata is before you on the screen, looking even worse for wear than she did previously. Her hair is thinning, with large swaths appearing being absent from the middle of her head. They weren't reflecting the soft glow of the model. You would have assumed she had, no longer had eyes for how deep they'd recessed into her skull. She stares ahead, unblinking. She won't stop. She, she won't go away. I know. Oh, I didn't, and, and no, I didn't pick up any info. Info hazard browsing the archives. Test myself for SCP-8673 infection. Negative. SCP-9181 is the, the only other one that uses print as a vector. Can't be that. I still have all my fingers. Her lips crack into a broken grin. She lets out a weak laugh and displays her trembling hands. What appears to be the most skeletal sk 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 remains of her fingers embedded into the flesh of her left hand. A stem that would have supported her natural ring finger. Two reddening bands loosely encircled the digit, laying atop one another. <laughs> so, I'm not infected. I'm not. I'm not. I'm... I'm not crazy. I know. I know the ritual worked. I know it's really her. It's her and she. Something catches her attention off screen. She cocks her head listening. No. No. I c can't. You're not. Not you. Not the same. Not you. It's not anymore. It's not you anymore. Nope. No, no, no. She begins rubbing her temples, her fingers up over and over again. A man passes. She snaps her head back up and dresses the camera. It's her, but it's not. What I brought back, still part of a, oh, one. There's no way, no way out. No way, there's no hope for a future for me. God, I can't go on like this any longer. I'll be safe here. The light can't reach me. I w won't let it take me. She branches a handgun. Was planning on using this, so I found some, some leftover meds. Don't want to want to risk calling myself, calling attention to my myself, to my body. She opens the desk drawer and deposits the firearm. She raises her gaze, stares into the camera. Mom, Dad, Ari, I'm sorry. She reaches forward and ends the recording. That's horrible. Did it have to end like that? You open the drawer and pull out the gun. You absentmindedly turn it over in your hands for a while. For a moment, wondering where you'll go from here. Site 17, 64. Surely you can't be all that's left. The computer dings. There's been an update to the file. SCP-001, current iteration, updated one minute ago. Arm number. Saffron skies raise a blazing sun, a chance encounter, awkward displays. One day my love would be as one. Object class, the two entwined, a set course begun, that frenetic, wild, lustrous haze, azure skies host a radiant sun. Special containing procedures, above us, beaming as we run, down that aisle of fervent craze, that day my love, we became as one. Well, with the future unfolded, the life we'd won, commitment and duty for the family we'd raise, so again, skies, buried, shimmering sun. Description. Buried, shackled by fate, overrun, by ever growing resent and uh, allays. Yesterday, my a day, my love, we were as one. Then the light, I hear, the life in you gone, 
in the dark outside of her rays. Crimson skies bear the torch our sun. Today my I love will be as one. System error. But I get prompting the page begins to play a video or file. You freeze when the image loads. It's a live feed looking down on you from behind, about a foot away. A skeletal, inky left hand enters the frame, approaching at a snail's face. It's missing its ring finger. But that's like and thought you turn fire in a frenzy, hoping to drive out the specter. Your bullets meet an empty wall. There's nothing there. A second passes before you hear it, for you hear them sloshing wet fluids coming down the corridor, accompanied by a chorus of screams. It slams into the door. Could there be a place to hide? Strikes a second time. What appears to be a face, part human, part something, dribbles in under the frame. It's a flesh from God knows what oozes in through the sides and reconstitutes into fingers, eyes, feathers. A third now is pressing up against the wood, causing it to sag inwards. With a groan and a crash, the wood splinters. Door explodes open. Hands and arms stretch out of the mass, pulling you up, passing you from one to the next, and on down the line. They drag you past the empty containment units, upwards and through the stairwell, through the halls and towards the tunnel. You afford a few precious moments in the darkness. And at the end of the tunnel, there is light. That was SCP-001, When Day Breaks. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. So until then, goodbye!